Look at that. I've got an iPhone 4 running iOS 7 and if you can see by the uh, Ingress app icon that's on the home screen, you might be able to tell that that's actually an unsigned IPA, or rather an unsigned app. What's up guys? In this video I'm going to show you how to jailbreak an iPhone 4 that's running iOS 7.2 using OpenSnow. Now uh, before I start this video there, there are a few things that I need to mention because um, this process is quite different. So there are a few things that I should probably mention up front before I show you the process in the video. So uh, first off, I'm taking no responsibility for uh, whatever I'm showing in this video. If you choose to replicate it on your own, that's up to you. It's your phone. You do what you want with it. And the only reason I'm saying that is because this process is relatively bit more complex than previous jailbreaks. This one, obviously, it's really only meant for developers, I'm pretty sure. And there isn't really a lot you can do it with it right now, but the process is a bit more interesting than uh, previous jailbreaks. So just keep that in mind. I'm not taking any responsibility. If you somehow mess up your phone, my best advice would be to just restore it and wait until an official uh, untethered iOS 7 jailbreak uh, whenever that's released by the evaders. Now the other thing to note is that there are multiple versions of the iPhone 4. So uh, the iPhone that I've got here is a GSM model that was released before 2012. Because I know if you try to download the IPAs manually, there's one for the GSM iPhone 4, one for the CDMA iPhone 4, and there's also one for GSM iPhone 4s released after or during 2012. So that's where things get a bit confusing. All I can say is I'm using a pre-2012 iPhone 4 that's running iOS 7.0.2 and I can confirm that at least in my case it works just fine but I'm not so sure if it works for CDMA iPhone 4s or for uh, GSM iPhone 4s that were released during 2012. Also, another interesting thing to note is that if you choose to jailbreak iOS 7, you will not actually get Cydia. Now, um, I know Sorek and other important people in the jailbreak community have said that, you know, if you want to jailbreak iOS 7, Cydia hasn't actually been optimized for iOS 7 yet. So if you do use the procedure that I'm going to show in this video, you will not get Cydia, you will not get any kind of installer. But what the tweak will do, what the jailbreak will do, it will, it will allow you to um, run unsigned or your own, it'll, it'll allow um, unsigned code execution, but that will not mean that you will get Cydia or any kind of way to install your Cydia tweaks, most of them which were probably broken with iOS 7 and won't work with it right now until it's updated at least. And um, speaking of that, getting tweaks onto the device, I'm not even sure how to do that because there are ways to uh, use SSH and such to uh, install the dev file onto the device, but I'm not actually too sure where to progress from that to be able to install the dev file to actually make use of those tweaks because a lot of the command utilities and commands that you would normally use to make executables don't actually work after you've used the jailbreak method on the iPhone 4 simply because a lot of the dependencies and such that you get when you perform a normal jailbreak aren't actually installed. So really what I'm trying to say is that I'm currently using the jailbreak on this phone uh, for now at least, to just run one unsigned IPA. So I'm not really sure if there's much you can do beyond running unsigned IPAs or like, you know, unsigned apps. Um, I know other people have managed to be able to like kind of work their way to get Cydia on iOS 7 and iFile, but really I'm not exactly too sure how that works. So as I said, I'm just using it to run an unsigned IPA. And another thing to mention is that if you look in the uh, description down below, there are a couple of things that you need to download and set up on your computer before you start. I'd recommend you get those things before you uh, continue watching the video and because there are a couple of things you do need to get because you'll, you'll need them at various stages during the process. So if you want to look, I've got a couple of links down in the description to an article or maybe some download links. If you look there, you can go ahead and download everything that you need before you start watching this video. And uh, last of all, I highly recommend you back up your device because a number of things could go wrong in this procedure. So it's always good to have a backup that you can restore to just in case things don't work out as intended. All right, I guess uh, that's all the warnings I have for the video. I'll now cut over to the actual procedure. Hope you enjoy it. All right, now the first thing you need to do is access the file system of your iPhone via SSH. If you don't know what SSH is, look it up. It's really a neat way of accessing your phone remotely. So, connect your phone to your computer. 
Next, you'll need to open Microsoft Gaia's SSH RAM disk tool and put your phone into DFU mode, which I'll demonstrate now. Once you're in, you'll need to enter the phone's credentials with root as the username and alpine as the password. Now open your SSH client and connect to localhost on port 2022. Once you're in, you need to open up a command window within the client and type mount.sh. Once that's done, you navigate to uh, mount1 slash etc and find the fstab file. Copy it to your desktop, rename the file on the device to fstab.old and edit the file on your computer as shown. Now, copy it back into the device and set the permissions to 0644. Next, scroll to uh, mount1 slash system slash library slash lockdown. Copy the services.plist file and rename the one on the device to services.plist.old. Now, you'll need a binary plist editor such as uh, Text Wrangler to open the plist file on your computer to edit the file as shown. Remember that the edits I've made to these two files are presented in the article I've linked in the description, so have a look at that if you're confused, as you don't want to mess up these e edits. If you do read the article, notice how it says to place the new lines underneath the original lines. I actually deleted the original lines as you can see, as simply adding the lines underneath did not work for me. This is why I think it's important to have the original file renamed just in case you need it. Once that's done, copy the new plist onto the device and set the permissions to 0644. Now open up the command window again and send the halt command. This should turn off your iPhone. If you try turning your iPhone on now, it will go into recovery mode and it will never boot into iOS 7 as you'd expect. So this is where OpenSnow comes in. Now there are two ways to do this, via either Ubuntu or OS 10. I'll demonstrate both as the steps needed for both are a little bit different. For the Ubuntu method, I've created a bootable USB with uh, Ubuntu 13.04 which is the latest release installed on that. Now that my MacBook is off. I'm going to uh, hold down the option key and before I do that I'm going to put the USB in and then after I hit the power button I'm going to uh, hold the option key while my MacBook is booting to get to the uh, boot selector. Once you're there, navigate to the USB, hit enter and select the option to try Ubuntu. Now if you have an Ubuntu install, you can just boot straight into that and follow the next steps as it'll make subsequent tethered boots much quicker. Now, there are a series of commands you need to enter via terminal. I'm not even bother going to try to speak them, so watch what I'm typing. Alternatively, I've included a link to a Reddit thread that lists the commands needed to download and install everything.
Once it's installed, the last command here navigates to where the installer is located and executes OpenSnow. Now the last line on the Reddit thread references an iPhone 4 running iOS 7.0, but if you're like me and you're running iOS 7.0.2, you'll need to modify what you type in like I have to reference the correct file. Once you hit enter, the terminal window should ask you to connect your device in DFU mode. Before you do that, make sure your computer is connected to the internet and then you put your iPhone into DFU mode while making sure it's connected to your computer via the USB cable. Once it's recognized, OpenSnow should boot your iPhone. As I'm booting off the USB, I haven't really installed the drivers to get Wi-Fi working on this Ubuntu install, and I was uh, trying to maintain a connection via my iPhone to download everything that's needed for demonstration purposes, but obviously that connection isn't going to be there while it's in DFU mode. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to OS X and show you how to get OpenSnow working in that, but do know that the Ubuntu method I've shown will work just fine as long as you can connect to the internet such that you don't need to rely on your phone's 3G, as OpenSnow will fail to jailbreak if it doesn't have an online connection. Running OpenSnow in OS X uses a pretty similar command, but requires a few different commands previous to that to install it. What's important to note is that, as you'll see, you need to copy a .diff file you'll download from another website into the OpenSnow folder and then you need to run a patch command, otherwise it won't be able to properly connect to the device later. So I'll stop talking soon and let you watch what I enter into the terminal window. In my next video, I'll show you how to install an unsigned app, which involves extracting the .app file from an IPA within the payload folder and copying it just straight into the system apps folder via SSH, like I showed before. Remember that if your device stops working, you can always restore from the backup if necessary. And remember that, as this is a tethered jailbreak, you'll need to run OpenSnow to boot your iPhone every time you fully turn it off. Alright guys, thanks for watching, please leave a comment down below and click the like button if this worked for you, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.